Hey everyone, this is Robert Fisher with Keller Williams Realty here in the Austin Round Rock area. Today I wanted to talk to you about a first time home buyer strategy, first or second time home buyer strategy. Um, and so before I get into it, I kind of want to give you a couple stats, uh, actually six of them. The average home buyer will buy a home and sell their home within two to five years after they purchase it. Uh, the average home buyer will look at buying a home not as an investment but as a commodity. And again, there's no right or wrong to this. This is just one strategy, so keep that in mind as we go through. Most home buyers, especially first and second time home buyers, do not know what they want in a home until after they live in a home a couple of years, which also you know ties into the two to five years why they sell the home so quickly. Selling a home, number four, selling a home definitely can be profitable, but there are some costs associated with selling a home, so you want to make sure you're smart on the buying end. Uh, number five, what you qualify as a, a for in terms of what you can purchase, let's say you're qualified for $200,000. You may only want to budget you know, $170,000 because that's what's comfortable to you. So just know what you qualify for and what you want to spend are two different things. And number six, just people don't realize, especially first and second time home buyers, we see that they get job changes, we see that they have babies, we see that they are relocated, and so that's, that also ties into why they move within that two to five years. So, putting all that in perspective, if you, were to, if you knew that before you bought a home, wouldn't there be a great strategy if you could put yourself in financial position saying, you know what, I may sacrifice a little bit when I buy my first home, but I'm going to put myself in a better financial position to buy my second and third home. And this is just one, one strategy to offer you then. One other thing I always like to talk about, and every buyer does this, whether they verbally say it or mentally say it, it's definitely there, and whether they know it or not. You're either buying house first or you're buying home first. And it's it may or may not make sense to you, but what we see is 80 to 90 percent of first and second time home buyers are going to buy a house first. You know, they may have a general location they want to be, but their house is going to be their number one. Third and fourth time home buyers are buying location first. And here's what that means. If they're buying location first, it says, I want to be in these three neighborhoods, and then I'm, and you can show me all the homes in these three neighborhoods. Or I want to be in this school district, period, the end. That's just what it is. If you're buying a house first, you may say, I want this general location, but really the one that makes me feel good, the one that shows the best, that's the one actually that I'm going to end up buying. And again, there is definitely no right or wrong. But you'll see as people start to graduate to, you know, to being third and fourth time home buyers, it does zoom in. So if you can change a little something on the front end, you're going to be so much more profitable on the back end, and it makes a big difference. There's only a few people that will actually end up doing this strategy because it's hard when you're buying a home. I have to admit, people just you see one that's real nice. It may not be the perfect location, but gosh, it feels good. And you are looking for that feeling of which home can make you feel good but you're looking for that financial feeling as well. So you're going to have to kind of mix the two. So when I go through this, there, there's three things you want to look for. And my, my asterisk on this is you're going to think about this and say, well, no doubt this is what every home buyer is looking for. However, most people, I will describe what each of them mean, and uh, most people will, will skip over these in their first and uh, second time home buy. So this is why this is important. So let me list them off. The three are buy home under market, under market value, uh, buy the most sellable product for that area, and buy in a great location. So just kind of keep that in mind as we go through this. Um, when you're buying under market value, most to be honest, this is the one we hear the most. Most, most of the time, home buyers will come to us and say, we want to buy a foreclosure, we want to buy a short sale, we want something that's a great deal. And we're like, great, you know, we can definitely help you out with that. Here's a strategy, here's all the foreclosures, here's all the short sales. However, once they get into it, then they end up saying that, well, this one needs some work. I don't want to put any work to it, which is fine. Um, and this one over here is just ready to go. And so you're going to have to weigh out the benefits of each, and, each of the other ones. But in our area, you know, you can still get a home, you know, this, there's not huge deals. I mean, the average home for heels, here sells at 96% of the, of the sales price. So, but you can still get a home ten dollars to $15,000 under market value that just needs some paint, maybe some carpet or cleaning the carpet or something that may not be a, a large cost for a first time home buyer, but still position you for when you're ready to sell your home later. Buy the most sellable product. This is the one I think is most skipped over that people don't even think about. So I really like to talk about this one. And 
I'll, I'll give you kind of the extremes, but it, there are there are less extremes in each each neighborhood, and your realtor should be able to tell you what that is and really help you know what this is what sells in this neighborhood. But for example, you don't ever buy a two story home in a retirement community. Um, you don't buy a two bedroom home when you're in in a school community where there's a lot of kids and they need a lot of bedrooms. You know, just just a lot of little things like that. Um, I have seen, and there's been certain neighborhoods kind of in our area that, you know, when you get a two-story, and it depends on which neighborhood, so certain neighborhoods, two-story with the master up has a $10 a square foot difference versus a two-story with the master down. And, and people just, people say, well, my realtor never told me that, or no one ever told me that, or I never even thought about it. There's a lot of little things that you need to make sure you, you know that you're looking for, and every little area is different. Downtown Austin, this kind of condo is going to sell better than something over here. Um, a one-story, four-bedroom over in this community is the most popular product but versus over here. So just know that there's a way to hone that in and when someone knows how to break down the numbers for that neighborhood and say this product versus this product versus this product, you will be in a world ahead of everybody else that's thinking about buying in that area. So just keep that in mind. Uh, great location. This one's pretty easy. Most people will always heard location, location, location. But things to think about are, you know, the big ones are, are you back into a main street? You know, that's, you know, that sometimes that can be a negative for residential. Are you back into a green belt? That's a positive. Um, location in the sense of, are you in a great school district, which was always going to be good? Are you near large employment? Are you near downtown? Are you near high-end neighborhoods? Are you in a high-end neighborhood and the, and the least expensive product in that neighborhood? There's all these combinations of location in terms of what you can do. Location in terms of how how big your lot is, which might be a benefit or a con, depending on what the uh, neighborhood that you're in also. So keep that in mind. And note too, for the most part, location doesn't normally change, but you know, in our area, redistricting happens. So the school district may not always be the same school district. Employers either get relocated um, or they, they go out of business or whatever. So just know it's, Location can change sometimes, but there's a way to kind of, you know, box yourself out and still put yourself in a good area. So, when I kind of tie all this together, and I'll have this on my website if you want to look at it or contact me about this as well. But when you tie all this together, if you know that the odds are that you're, I mean, that very strong odds that you're going to sell within two to five years, why not develop a strategy on the front end to put you in a financial position? You know, and if you have a young family and you decide, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and go for what I want, then, then there's nothing wrong with that too. This is just one opportunity to say, I'm going to have ten, twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 extra for my second or third home. And so we have, we have a lot of different strategies for investors. We have strategies for first-time home buyers. We have them all in between. But we really want to be your uh, real estate financial advisor. If you have any questions, please give me a call. Visit my website, and uh, as always, my name is Robert Fisher with Keller Williams Realty, real estate with a servant's heart.